Australia is an undeniably cool place, but the land down under is anything but ordinary. It's the world's smallest continent, with only 3 million square miles to its name. Yet, whatever Australia lacks in size, it makes up for with its incredible activities and sights, glorious oceans, unique wildlife, fascinating landscapes, and rich history. But what about this amazing place do we not know? You just wait and see. 15 Mysterious Things Recently Discovered in Australia Spider Lightning These flashes are called spider lightning due to the pattern they create when they quickly creep and crawl from one cloud to another. These long, horizontally traveling flashes can be seen from Earth below the clouds when they're especially strong and bright. For a thunderstorm to be called a thunderstorm, it needs to have electrical discharge or lightning within the storm. Thunderstorms have quite a bit of energy in them. Although this weather phenomenon can happen anywhere around the world, Australia has the most amazing displays of spider lightning. Tentacles of light flashed across the sky. Spider lightning normally starts as intracloud lightning thunderstorms in the anvil, the flat expanse of cloud which spreads out at the top of a storm. If you look at the structure of a storm, you can imagine in the bulk of the storm is the trunk and then the anvil is more like the canopy spreading out above it. The lightning tends to take on that sort of forked appearance of a tree when that lightning spreading out in the upper canopy of the storm. Once the lightning gets into the upper reaches of the anvil, it can spread out and, as you can see, it's quite a show. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. Australia is an island continent. To the south is the Southern Ocean, to the west is the Indian Ocean, and to the east is the Pacific Ocean. Importantly, these oceans and coasts provide $25 billion worth of essential ecosystem services such as carbon dioxide absorption, nutrient cycling, and coastal protection. It's home to a diverse array of marine species, many of which occur nowhere else in the world. So if you ever find yourself in the ocean surrounding Australia, shining your light into the monstrous eyeball of this unknown creature? What do you do? Those giant eyes, a mouth you could drive a submarine into, and those teeth. Is it even from our planet? Maybe it's some sort of hybrid, part sea creature, part machine, making up some super xenomorph that defies what we know to be natural. There's more than one, too. You should know that only 25% of the sea floor of Australia's marine jurisdiction has been mapped, so it's not hard to imagine something like this sea monster could still be lurking down under. Any thoughts? Use the hashtag sweet topic in your comments below. Huge Dust Storm Dust storms are natural hazards that commonly occur in North Africa, the Middle East, North Asia, and as you can see, Australia too. They more frequently occur where deserts are present, and they occur when strong, hot, dry winds blow dust and soil into the air and move it across the country, often for many miles. These storms are more likely to occur in the summer and after a period of drought when the land is warmer and the soil is more exposed. Because Australia has large areas of dry, sun-baked land, dust storms are more common here than in cooler countries that have more rainfall. A necessary component is loose, fine sediment, which deserts have an abundance of. The basic principles of what creates a dust storm involve a few components, mainly dry weather, the presence of strong surface winds in a low-pressure system, and loose, uncultivated soils. When combined under the right circumstances, events such as the 2009 Australian dust storms are formed. Occurring for two days, this dust storm was unlike any other in 70 years, blanketing most of eastern Australia in a red haze, garnering the title the Red Dawn. For those few days, the regions affected by the storm were essentially shut down entirely. Spanish Dancer Slug would you believe this creature is actually a slug? And they can be spotted putting on a vibrant display along the coast of Western Australia. It gets its name from bearing a striking resemblance to a flamenco dancer skirt. One was recently captured floating in the waters of Coral Bay with its red and orange hues. Not only does the Spanish dancer crawl as a mode of transportation, but it also swims. If you see this sea slug crawling across a reef like sea slugs do, you never guess the mollusk could swim. No other sea slugs are known to move like this. 
If the animal is disturbed, it unfolds its edges and can swim through contractions and undulations of the body to move away from the disturbing element. Its common name, Spanish Dancer, comes from this particular defense. It pretty much looks like it's dancing. This marine gastropod, found in the Indo-Pacific Ocean and the Red Sea, is unusual and beautiful, to say the least. Plus, they steal power from others like Rogue from X-Men and can absorb superpowers from others just by touching them. Similarly, the Spanish dancer eats marine sponges and toxic jellyfish for dinner. Then they assimilate the poisons for their own defense. <laughs> Golfing with Sharks If you're ever bored of your typical golf game, try golfing here. A course near Brisbane has a unique feature to test your skills. Beyond the bunkers at this golf club, there's an altogether more menacing deterrent on the course. Sharks Today, fins can sometimes be seen breaking above the surface. Now that's what you call a water hazard. How did they get there? Australia's Carbrook Golf Course was flooded when a river nearby burst its banks and covered the fairways. When the floodwaters drained away, it was noticed that the course lake, between holes 12 and 5, had some new aquatic residents. And not just any sharks, bull sharks. They can thrive in both saw and fresh water and can travel far up rivers. Since bull sharks often dwell in very shallow waters, they're found in many types of habitats, are territorial by nature, and have no tolerance for provocation. They may be more dangerous to humans than any other species of shark. Here, a dozen man-eating bull sharks are waiting to swallow any lost bait. So if you lose your ball in the water, just let it go. That's their turf now. It's also made the golf course even more popular. Today, the sharks are thriving and even breeding. Fake Russian Choir They're dressed as Russian workers in cloth caps and singing traditional Russian songs. But in fact, none of these singers have ever been anywhere near Russia, nor do any of them speak the language. According to the master of ceremonies for this color, it's the leading genuine fake Russian choir in the Southern Hemisphere. It's a 28 men, middle-aged, very hairy, who have all living around the world. So when they accidentally went viral, they were picked up by Russian television and are now known to millions of Russian people. The idea came from comrade Glenn Wright, a former co-owner and talent booker. He had a long-standing love affair with the music of Russia the great Russian composers, and also the marching army songs. He wanted a Russian choir for a festival but couldn't afford to fly one out, so he hatched the idea of creating one locally. They didn't audition anybody, it was about looking the part, and singing ability was not a requirement. From their inaugural gig, they knew something special was happening, and they sing perfect four-part harmony in Russian even though some of them can't sing. <laughs> Deadly Ghost Town Incredibly, tourists won't stop visiting this abandoned town in Australia even though it's been described as the most contaminated place on the planet. The toxic air can be deadly. Welcome to Wittenoon in Western Australia. It had once been a bustling mining town, believe it or not. It roared into life in 1943 when mining for blue asbestos first began. At the time, asbestos was a lucrative industry and it soon became the biggest town in the region. Thousands of men and women worked for the mines, and many more, including children, lived around it. When the mines closed in 1966, life slowly drained from the town. But it's not just any ghost town. Wintenum has a killer past. Over 2,000 workers and residents have died as a result of asbestos diseases to date. The government started demolishing buildings and sealing off the waste dumps from the mines, and it was disconnected from the national grid. And the air remains toxic with asbestos today. So much so, it was taken off maps and road signs in a bid to discourage people from visiting. It cannot be cleaned up and it's extraordinarily dangerous. But the town, located on the edge of Kurajini National Park, has become a surprise hit with tourists despite health warnings. <laughs> World's Biggest Worms This strange beast was first discovered by railroad workers in the Gippsland region of Australia in 1878. While doing a routine survey of a line there, the baffled crew initially mistook it for a snake. 
it soon became clear. However, that it was something else. Turns out it's just a really big earthworm, and it only exists in a very small range here. Isolated for millions of years, the Australian continent naturally gave rise to the abundance of life forms, wholly endemic to the landmass to this day. Fortunately for those who discovered the giant Gippsland earthworm, the species is harmless to humans, no matter how frightening they appear. Yet experts know very little about the worm's physiology, other than it can grow up to 10 feet and has a high amount of hemoglobin in its blood to help it survive the low oxygen levels in underground environments. The slithering Gippsland earthworm can burrow up to 5 feet deep even without any limbs. What truly distinguishes the species, however, is that you can hear it through the soil as it produces a loud and disturbing gurgling noise that sounds like water draining from a bathtub. It's because of the worm's moist living environment that it makes the distinct racket. Trash Can Cockatoos The sulfur-crested cockatoo is a relatively large white cockatoo found in wooded habitats in Australia, and there are a lot of them leading to them sometimes being considered pests. And now, for another reason, in recent years, a parrot learned to pull off the lid of a trash can. First, one stood on the edge of the lid. He pried open the gap with his beak, and with the lid in its mouth, it stepped onto the bin's edge and pushed until the lid was high in the air, and then tipped over entirely. The bird grabbed some ripe trash and feasted. Then something surprising happened. It taught another parrot to do the same thing, and another, and another, until the suburbs around Sydney were full of parrots that could open trash cans. And the skill became so widespread, parrots in surrounding neighborhoods had also picked up the trick. By the end of 2019, the researchers collected reports of trash opening in 44 different suburbs. That learning process is the latest example of cultural evolution in the animal world. On some level, parrots, in this case, sulfur-created cockatoos are exactly the kind of animal that you'd expect to develop a creature, that you'd expect to develop. Cockatoos are a notoriously chatty social species. <laughs> Outback Stormtrooper He may not have known it at the time, but when nine-year-old Scott Loxley first saw stormtroopers walking across the deserts in Star Wars in 1977, he was looking into the future. 36 years later, after watching the classic flick at the local drive-in with his parents, he decided to combine his love for a galaxy far, far away with a lifelong ambition to cross Australia on foot. So, Scott put an ambitious plan in motion that would see him walk across the expanse of the country in his stormtrooper armor in an effort to raise $100,000 for a children's hospital. Scott's mission might seem strange, but he actually did this for a very specific reason. He's a member of a volunteering group dedicated to supporting children's charities by dressing up in Star Wars costumes. He completed what surely must be the world's toughest and longest ever Imperial March. And things do get incredibly tough while walking across a desert in unbearable heat. Carrying food on such an arduous journey is also quite difficult, so Scott had to make do with whatever is available on the go. He has had to eat a few bizarre meals on his journey, including snakes, kangaroos, lizards, and even bats. From start to finish, it took 601 days, and of those, about 430 or so were walking, not resting, or fundraising. <laughs> Beach Falls into Sea All throughout Australia, there are many remarkable places to visit for their beauty. One of the most popular places is Inskip Point. This peninsula is located to the north of Inskip, a locality in Queensland, Australia. This location makes for great views of the seaside and also offers up some beachfront fun. But not just this beach, and you can see why, the so-called sinkholes appear every now and again along Inskip Beach, but technically it's not considered a sinkhole, which is caused by the earth dissolving beneath the ground. Instead, this phenomenon is known as a nearshore landslide caused by the fast-moving current that dissolves the sand beneath its surface. Eventually, the weight of the sand becomes too great to support itself, and it collapses. And make no mistake, it has the potential to take with it anyone standing near it. This vanishing beach occurred not far from where previous holes have opened up in the past, including one that forced people to evacuate. 
It's happened numerous times before, and it's well known by locals. But the good news is that they repair themselves. Sometimes within weeks or months, they'll fill in again. The sea brings the sand back. Underground Town This unusual place is the center of Australia's opal mining industry. It's located in South Australia, over a thousand miles from Canberra, the country's capital city. An estimated 70% of the world's opal production can be linked back to the town, earning it the title of opal capital of the world. It's called Cooper Petty. In fact, the majority of Cooper's residents work in the opal industry here, and half of its inhabitants live underground. And after a hundred years of living in these dugouts, the folks who call it home have no plans of leaving. What began in 1916 as a mining operation has since expanded into the unreal subterranean community. And as you can see, nothing about this underground mining town is for the faint of heart. For starters, it's hot. In the summer, temperatures can creep up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit in the shade. Despite this, over the years, Cooper Petty's residents have become extremely adept at life, creating customized subterranean houses that go beyond just living in a cave. Entire bedrooms, bookstores, churches and bars are installed in the carved underground walls. Now, the town has become a leader in sustainable living despite being one of the hottest, dustiest, and driest places in all of Australia. Hieroglyphics Considered a hoax by some, an ultimate evidence of ancient Egyptian transoceanic voyages by others, the curious set of symbols in Australia has produced mixed views from researchers around the globe. Referred to as the Gosford Glyphs, these intricate set of symbols is believed to have been carved some 5,000 years ago by ancient Egyptians who visited down under. The glyphs site features almost 300 engravings on two sandstone walls. They're found in an area known for its aboriginal petroglyphs within the Brisbane Water National Park. First sighted in Australia in the 1900s, it's said that the enigmatic set of symbols carved on a massive rock has been present in local folklore for more than a century. Did advanced ancient civilizations, like the ancient Egyptian civilizations, manage to travel by ship to other continents? It sure looks like it. According to numerous sources, the ancient Egyptian civilization was extremely well developed. They did construct powerful transoceanic ships, which may have taken them not only to the American continent, but Australia too. And while many scholars are convinced that these supposed hieroglyphs are nothing more than a modern day forgery, there are those who not only believe they're the real deal. Mari Man Cut into the harsh landscape with lines over 115 feet wide and one foot deep, the towering Mari Man is easily visible from space. It's a 2.6 mile long line drawing of an aboriginal with an outline that measures 17 miles around the full perimeter, which makes it the largest geoglyph and work of art in the world. The landmark was only discovered in 1988 by a pilot flying over Australia's outback, and this huge geoglyph has puzzled scientists since then for the simple reason that not a single witness saw the creation of the Mari Man. Somehow, one person or a group of people were able to create the geoglyph without being seen, which speaks to the absolute isolation of the region. There have been several rumors about its mysterious creation. Some people claim that the artwork was simply a publicity stunt by an unknown artist while others believe it was even built by extraterrestrials. But we may never know the true origin of the Mari Man. The awe-inspiring carving has begun to fade over the years, and the Mari Man had almost disappeared entirely. This caused locals from the nearby town to begin an effort to preserve the iconic carvings. So locals used a construction grader to retrace the carvings back into the ground at a deeper level than before. The Spinning House Welcome to Everingham Rotating House. This rotating house is octagonal in shape and surrounded by a circular exterior veranda, and the whole thing spins 360 degrees each way. This allows us to take advantage of the seasonal changes, like following or avoiding the sun, moving the lounge room to catch the breeze, or perhaps taking advantage of the views like waking up with the river in view, dining by the riverside just to name a few. A touchscreen in the dining room controls the rotation, a full rotation takes about 45 minutes, so you can hardly notice you're moving. The house can be set up to follow the sun or to avoid the sun. It can be moved to get out of the wind or to catch the breeze, but largely of glass and steel and powered by an electric motor. 
The house is a brilliant testimonial to the ingenuity of its owner and builders. It encapsulates many aspects of ecologically sound building principles, such as optimizing natural light and heat while rotating 360 degrees to take advantage of sunshine and shade at different times of day. The concept for this project is the result of nearly a decade of research, planning and design, and 10 months of construction over a two-year period. Pinnacles the pinnacles are amazing natural limestone structures formed approximately 25,000 to 30,000 years ago after the sea receded. Many of the pinnacles stand over 10 feet tall and are a popular attraction for tourists looking to set foot on alien soil without ever leaving the earth. Three major theories have been proposed as to how they came to be. The first theory states that they were formed as dissolution remnants of the limestone. They formed as a result of a period of extensive weathering. A second theory states that they were formed through the preservation of trees where roots became groundwater conduits and wind erosion exposed the concrete pillars. A third proposal suggests that plants played an active role in the creation of the pinnacles as they drew water through the soil to the roots, nutrients and other dissolved minerals flow toward the root. The movement of water to the roots would drift the flow of the calcium to the root surface. This calcium accumulates at high concentrations around the roots and over time turned into these. Located at the southern gateway to Australia's coral coast, the Pinnacles Desert of Nambung National Park is Western Australia's most visited attraction. These videos prove that life is little different down under, but that's what makes it so special. So be the first to catch more of our great videos by liking and subscribing and stay tuned for more awesome content.